Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today we have a new make what you see in the shops video and we're going to make a woolen camel coat. I uh, post a question on my channel uh, for you to choose what I should make and I saw that even for you it was really difficult to, to choose so I got very happy that I was not the only one to that was uh, for whom it was not easy to make uh, a decision. Um, but these camel coats you see them everywhere and they're really a staple piece because they just stay in style always. They are here for years and years already, but you just keep being stylish. Uh, and they are really versatile because of the color, because of the style. You can wear them with anything. And uh, it's really a nice coat to have in your closet. And I, had, I had this fabric already for years and years and I just put it away. I saved it because I really wanted to make something really nice out of it. And then usually I'm scared to uh, use it for something because I'm afraid that I've made the right, wrong decision. And I, where, where I used it for wasn't really what it should be. So now I've made the choice to make this camel coat finally. And uh, we're going to do this together. So I choose some photos from uh, the internet and there were really a lot to find of these coats. Um, you see the left one has, uh, they call it a waterfall uh, neck, a waterfall uh, collar. I like that very much, uh, but I'm not sure if I want to do this because this is not really the classic style. And maybe in a few years or maybe in a year, uh, it will get out of style, this kind of color. But so I'm not sure if I want that. Uh, but the back of the second um, photo I really like. It has those princess seams that gives that really nice curve in the back and you can do it also in the front and it looks very nice. So I think I will choose that for the back certainly and for the front. Um, the belt in the third photo I really like, the tight belt. So we're going to do that for sure. And the classic style that the third photo has, I really like how the sleeves fall. Uh, it has coat sleeves with a seam uh, down the back. That looks very nice. I like that very much. Uh, the fourth photograph uh, has those big pockets. I like that too. Oh, and the second, uh, the third and fourth uh, picture both have the lapels. I really want to make that because that's really the classic style. So that's what uh, we're going to do. Um, and the fifth photograph, the well, it's only the sixth photograph, has a really nice back. Um, I like that, but it's more for trench coat, I think. So I'm not sure if I'm going to do that in my design. Um, I really like how it looks, but I'm not really sure if I should do that. I think it's better to make uh, to stick with the classic style because then you really can wear this coat for years and years. And then you're sure that you... Uh, you did the right thing to, to make it like that. So I'm not really sure about that, but I'll think about it. Okay, so here is my fabulous drawing again. I choose for the more classy style because then I can wear it for years and years. When you do some really um, new details, then maybe in a few years or in a year you won't wear it. So I just took the classic camel coat with the lapels, um, the, the seams, uh, sort of princess seams, but I adjusted that it's not too difficult for the beginners. Um, a coat, a sleeve, that I make an adjustment that it's not too difficult to, uh, to draw the pattern. A uh, slit on the back, um, just normal plain pockets, uh, a belt to tie, and um, just a plain camel coat, a classic camel coat. And I think we will uh, really get much use out of it because it stays in style always and it's really a classy coat. I'm not sure about the length. I want it a bit below my knee, but I don't know how much fabric I have, how long I can go. So I see uh, when I put a pattern on the fabric, how much I can uh, uh, take in length. So that's what we're going to make. So the pattern. Uh, I was thinking how I was going to show you this um, because the wheel pattern obviously is way too big to get it in this in this video shot. So I zoomed you in a bit and I uh, make a pattern, but in uh, not the wheel size, but it's uh, about uh, the shape that you have to draw and it's your own sizes. So it doesn't matter if this is smaller than the wheel one uh, because yours will be different from mine. So. Uh, just uh, look how I uh, draw the lines and uh, I tell you what the sizes are in the length and in the width. So um, it doesn't matter, it's not the exact size. 
So what you gotta do for the front. Um, oh, what you need um, is your measurements from the first video. I hope that you, you have them still or that you have made them. Otherwise go back to my first make what you see in the shop video. There I teach you how you to take your measurements and you can always use this for other projects. So have that by hand. You need it for your uh, sizing. Um, what you can do is you draw a straight line uh, for the uh, mid front, the center front. And a straight line for the shoulder. So it's, that's the two lines that we are uh, measuring from. So I put them in red that they are good to see for you. Then what we're gonna do is we're gonna uh, draw the shoulder. And the shoulder for me in my uh, measures was 11 centimeters. And make sure you drop your shoulder a bit. So I put a straight line for the, the height, but we're gonna drop it about a centimeter. For me, it's uh, a bit less. You're gonna drop it and you draw a straight line uh, of your shoulder width. So for me it is 11 for your reference. Um, then what you're gonna do is you take um, how much your waist is down from your shoulder and um, you mark that. This is the uh, length, the, 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 how much you drop down to your waist and um, how much you drop down for your armhole. That's for me 21 centimeters. So this is the drop for the armhole. And what you're gonna do is um, you're gonna take your um, measuring how far down you want your armhole to be. To me it is 21 centimeters. And you make a curved line down to that mark A. Doesn't really matter how it goes, it's about something like this. Then you uh, take your uh, waist width and you take your quarter waist as, you, as we had measured before and you add that with 10. So for me about, uh, it's about here, it was uh, for me it's 17 and you add 10 to it and you mark that, that is your waist line. Uh, then you go down, you measure how long, how far you want below my shot you want your uh, coach to be and you make a little bit of a curved line to that waist point from the armhole and then you go down and you go a bit out. Um, what you have to do is when you are uh, your bust or your waist is uh, very different from uh, your, your, uh, your bust and your hips I must say are really uh, different from your waist so you have really rather wide hips or a rather big bust then it's better to take your bust or your hip width as reference and then you make the curve so maybe you have bigger uh, boobs then you make this a bit wider and you make the curve from that when you have bigger hips you measure from this and you make a curve from that if that makes sense um, then what you're gonna do you have this is the, the shape of the coat already, the front. Then what you can do is you mark your apex. We already uh, measured that too, that's the nipple of your boob. You measure how high that is or how low from the shoulder down, you mark that. Because we uh, are gonna have the sort of princess seams, I make it a bit easier, but we have these side uh, seams here. And a wooden princess seam is a bit too difficult because I want this for beginners too. So I make an adjustment. So you mark your apex and then you draw a line about halfway the armhole. You draw a curved line through the apex and then down to the bottom of the coat. And to make the shape for the uh, princess seam, is um, this is the cut that we're going to cut the pattern in, in two. But you're gonna adjust the side uh, front of the pattern by uh, curving the apex a bit in to the armhole. It doesn't have to be much, just a centimeter or maybe two centimeters. But you curve the side pattern, you curve a bit in. And uh, for the waist, you can cinch that in a bit too. So from the apex, you make a curved line to the waistline. This is the waistline. And then you go back in. To the line. So uh, where we gonna cut it? I did this a bit big. This doesn't have to be that big. It's just a couple of centimeters. 
that you have to go uh, to go in. Um, so when we cut cut this out, you have one pattern, um, but you cut uh, the the front uh, center front part. You cut along the white line, and the side front you cut along the left line. Um, what else do we have to do? Oh, of course the lapels. Lapels. Um, we, this was the center front, the red line. We make, uh, because we have to put the coat over each other, we add about uh, two centimeters to the left or the right from that. And from there, we're gonna make the lapels. And um, I marked, where did I mark that? Didn't I mark it? No, I don't think I marked it. You can, um, uh, so, oh yes, I marked it because it's the apex, the same height as the apex. That's where you're gonna uh, curve the lapels out. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna make a curved line going out and then going up. And it is really difficult to tell you how you're gonna um, draw this, but what you can do is you cut it out, then you fold it over because this is the part that falls out. And then you can see, do I like this curve on my front pattern of the coat? If you don't like it, make it a bit higher or make it a bit lower, make it a bit bulkier, uh, whatever you like. So just when you cut this out, then you can fold it over and see how it looks. If it isn't nice, then just uh, tape a bit of paper underneath it and you can make a new curve. And of course you have to curve this one for the neck hole. And this is your front part of piece. Um, what you have to do is you cut it out from the outline, then you cut this and this, so you have a mid front pattern piece and a side front pattern piece. And then what you also have to do, um, because we make this with a lining, well I make it with a lining, uh, I want the front part of the same fabric as the outer part of the coat, but I want the, the more uh, inner part of the coat from lining, just the thin lining um, fabric. So I want to um, make a, a, a line where I want to, till where I want to cut uh, the, the facing for uh, the front and where I want the lining piece to start. I don't like it to be here because this is all curved and it's very difficult to do that with the, uh, the thicker fabric. So I make, uh, usually I make the facing um, parting around halfway the shoulder and then going down. So it doesn't really matter how this line goes, it's just uh, where you cut, when you have cut this out all of the fabric, where you cut the pattern off to have the um, outer fabric, facing uh, fabric, and the inner part and the side part of the lining fabric. So it's may maybe a bit confusing, but we'll talk about it when we are cutting the fabric. Just make this drawing, cut it out, and cut this line out because that is uh, very important because you, got, you need to have two pieces of the front. So for the back, I hope the front wasn't that confusing. If it is, let me know in the comment section then I will try to explain it again because it's really not that difficult but it is difficult to explain and that's not my best part so. Okay, well the back isn't that, that difficult. Uh, again, you, got, you draw a straight line uh, for the mid front, you do a, a line here for the top, so you have your measurements. Um, what you're gonna do is you're gonna curve your neck, so uh, measure how long, how low your neck will be, uh, how far in. Uh, for me, it is eight centimeters. Then you take your shoulder, that was eleven centimeters, just the same as in the front. Um, your armhole, again, uh, for me it is 21 centimeters down, so I make there a curve from the shoulder down. Uh, then we're gonna have the waist, measure how low your waist will be. And then um, measure uh, how much it is. To me, uh, a quarter waist is uh, blue, or what was it? I think 12. And you add uh, for the back, you don't have to add the 10 that you had in the front, you can add 6 or 7. Uh, and again, measure that out to the outer line and then again make a curve down 
as long as you want your coat to be covered a bit out. Um, again, if your bust or your hips are really uh, much uh, wider in conference to your waist, then measure out your um, bust and add 8 or 6. Or measure out your hips and add the same amount, then that's your reference to where you make the curve. Then again, we make the princess seam, sort of. Uh, so halfway your armhole, make a curve down. Doesn't really matter how. We don't have apex here, so we don't have to do that or anything. Um, if you like, you give, can give this just a little bit of a tuck. We don't really need it, but normally it gets the shoulder a bit nicer in. And make a curve here along the waist, just a centimeter or two to get a little bit cinched in at the waist. Was that in focus? Yes, it was. Um, well, that's all for the back, so this is very easy. Go all the way down as long as you want your, uh, your coat to be. Okay, then the sleeves. Uh, I have been doubting about this because I want this to be for beginners too and a coat sleeve is rather difficult to, um, to draw. Uh, I have to explain very much and I don't think it is appropriate for this kind of videos. So I have been thinking uh, how can I make an adjustment that looks like a coat sleeve but really isn't or isn't that difficult. Um, maybe I'll explain how a normal uh, sleeve is or maybe you know already but I'll explain it anyway. Normally a sleeve is symmetrical so it has a curve like this and then it goes down like that and you have a midline, it's the red line and when you fold it together um, it's left and right is the same. Uh, a coat sleeve is different because a coat sleeve has um, a seam in the back uh, sleeve and the, the top of the uh, curve is slided to the front. So what you can do, have this in mind, that curve, and what we're going to do is we're going to take this point and we're going to put it a bit to the right. So uh, the top of the sleeve, we're going to put it there. So this is the top of the curve and we're going to make uh, the front part of the sleeve a bit with a more steep curve and the back of the sleeve we're going to make a bit of a uh, longer curve, something like that. You see, this, we, we moved it a bit like that and we pushed it a bit in on that side. Then what is important, because that makes it of the, if the sleeve is going to fit or not, is measure out how uh, big your sleeve must be. And because this is a winter coat, make sure you measure uh, along your arm that you can put a um, thick a sweater underneath it. So measure out how much it is. For me, I measured it should be at least 37 centimeters from left to right here in the armhole. So make sure you have that. And then you go down just uh, how far, you, how long, long you want your uh, sleeves to be. And then you measure how tight you want it around your wrist because that is the bottom of the sleeve, the width here. Uh, how much you want, how tight you want it along your sleeve, thinking that there has to be a thick sweater underneath it. It must be possible to do that. Um, so you have do these two measurements that are really important. And what is also important, measure your armholes from your front and from your back pattern, because this curve has to fit in with some extra. Because we're going to fit this in a little bit, because then your uh, sleeve will fall over nicely. So measure out that this is more than your armholes from the front of the uh, uh, coat and the back of the coat together. So when you have drawn this, take your patterns from your front and from your back uh, coat and measure the armholes so that you are sure that it fits in. Um, if you're doubting, if you're not sure, make it bigger. You can also always cut something off, but you can never add. So when you're not sure about this, make it bigger and then you just take the seams here or take the seams here. It doesn't really matter. You can always adjust it when you have enough fabric. So do that. If you're really insecure about this, then just draw a normal straight um, sleeve. Uh, you can even take a, a sweater and uh, copy that and make it a bit bigger. 
uh, then you have the right uh, form of the uh, of the curve uh, but it is not really that specific in this case because you can always adjust a little bit when you are putting it together so this is about the sleeve so now for the color um, I'm thinking how I'm gonna explain this but uh, the easiest is to make a rectangle that is uh, 16 centimeters high and 20 centimeters wide and then what you're gonna do is you're gonna make um, you're gonna measure uh, how much the point of your uh, lapels are to the um, mid side of your coat for me it is 8 centimeters so where the the curve we, we um, draw the levels like this and then it goes back to the side here is the mid front but you have some overlap for the buttons so the um, distance between here and the point this distance it must be the same as this distance so for me that was eight centimeters so I mark eight centimeters down here and then from this point you better mark it because you must have the same mark on this um, pattern of your uh, front from this point you're gonna make a curved line and before you do that you have to measure how much uh, centimeters this whole curve must be to fit in uh, the neckline of your back, the half of the back and the half of the front. You're gonna measure where is my focus? There it is. Your neck from the front. Do you see what I'm meaning there? And the neck from your back. You're gonna measure that how much that is, and of that length you make this curve. Same uh, distance as the curve you're gonna make now. So you make just the curve, doesn't matter how you do it, you can take it more wide or more flat. And then what you do is you take your measurements and you measure it on your uh, pattern, the front and the back. And that must be the same as the curve you made now. So for me that was about uh, 22 centimeters, so I made this a little bit too wide because that was 24. So you can make any curve as long as this distance is the same as the half of your neckline from the back and the half of the neckline from your front. And then what you're gonna do is you're gonna uh, make this a little bit of, uh, uh, how do you call that? I don't know how it is English. You can see what I do. You make it a bit uh, angled. Just a bit like this. It doesn't come really precise just about this and the nice thing of this fabric we have is when we uh, pin it on and the angles don't look nice or this then you all can also cut some pieces off because you don't have to hem it or whatever you have to wear edges so you can make uh, all the edges different when it doesn't look right because I always do that but then you have to sew again and now you can just cut it off when you've pinned it on the uh, on the uh, on the coat uh, so this is about your, your pattern um, and then you cut it out. This is the mid back. So this line must be on the fabric fold so that you can open it up and then you have one collar and then you have to cut that two times because you need two times the whole collar. One for the outer fabric and one for the lining. So that will be your collar. As you know by now I don't add uh, uh, seams to my patterns. Uh, I know in the US they do that normally, in my country we don't. Uh, I don't really like it because I like to uh, s uh, decide how much seam allowance I want when I'm cutting the fabric because for me it's depending on the fabric, it's depending on the place, it's depending on whether I'm not sure if I know the length right or the width right. So uh, when I cut uh, the fabric, then I adjust, uh, then I put um, seam allowance to it. Um, now this is uh, a bit different because uh, we have uh, uh, cooked woolen and that doesn't fray. So you don't put white sides together, sew it and then flip it open. We're gonna now put it on top of each other. And so we put one centimeter on one centimeter and then we're gonna sew it on half a centimeter of the edge. So it's a bit difficult of sewing, but I'll show you when we uh, start to sew. But uh, that means that we're going to add a centimeter on all the seams. 
uh, for me that is almost the same because I normally do that when I uh, so uh, so put a centimeter on, on almost all the seams but not on the front seam because we don't have to uh, put that on top of something only because we can put it on top of the facing but we don't need it as, as an extra fabric. So I want you to see how you're gonna cut this front piece because maybe that wasn't too clear. We made this princess seam, so we're gonna cut it out. And you have two seams, uh, two uh, lines to cut. You have this right line that's going straight down, and you have this left down that has this curve here gotten, and it has this curve here. So we're gonna put two times down, and I'm gonna show you right now because we have another one to cut, and maybe that is not. Uh, clear when I don't do that on camera so I'm gonna cut the right line and because this is not my real uh, pattern I only cut out this one because um, I have my own pattern and my own sizes on another uh, paper so you cut the right line then you have the center front part and the side front part and here you're gonna cut this off so you're gonna cut this little curve off, you don't need it anymore, so you can throw it away. And you're gonna cut this waist piece because then you can cinch it in a bit by making this uh, seam a bit tighter. So try to make it a bit of a nice, nice curve going in and going out. So this is your side front, this is your mid front. You're gonna cut this all. Um, from your fabric, from your woolen fabric, also with the back two parts because you have a, a center and a side one too and together with the sleeves, oh I didn't show you the cut of the sleeves, I'll add that now because we're gonna put the sleeves also in two parts, I'll leave that later um, so you cut this also from wool but we also need facing for the lapels so we're gonna cut, when you've cut this out from your fabric, from your main fabric, we're gonna cut again. And then you're gonna cut this line, and that was the facing line. And we're gonna use this all, so don't throw anything away of this, because we're gonna use them. Like this, so now the front is in three parts. And you're gonna uh, cut this part, the mid mid front, again from your wooden fabric because that is the outer part of the lapels. And then you have a really nice faced lapel when you fold it over. And this little piece and your side one, you only cut from the lining. And also the uh, back two pieces you cut from the lining and the sleeve two pieces you cut from the lining. So I hope this makes sense. Then I go back to the uh, sleeve because I forgot that. <coughs> see now I don't have it taped down, so I have to see that I get it nice inside. Because we made this pattern very nice. But I also want uh, an upper sleeve and a lower sleeve because even when you don't make this strange curve, you just take the regular curve, it really looks more nice when you give it um, an extra seam on the back. Now I'm looking for my marker. Okay. So what you're gonna do is on the side with the longer curve, then you're gonna make the seam and um, it's just about uh, the middle of um, the wet line and the side line. So um, go straight across from there, making a slight curve to the um, bottom. And if you like, you can also take a little piece out here. So then uh, when you throw this out, so you throw this away, this black part, then you, your uh, sleeve tucks a little bit in and then you get a more nice um, curve around the shoulder. So you can do that, but make sure when you, that you cut out uh, some uh, centimeters, just about one or two, that you have enough fabric to fit in your armholes, because otherwise you get a problem. You can have more, but you can't have less. 
so you can do that too and then you cut this also out in two pieces the upper uh, sleeve and the lower sleeve and this you can throw away well as you have seen um, I got some really beautiful uh, wool uh, that I have for many 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 years and when I buy a fabric and I don't make something out of it immediately then I always leave it down because I'm afraid that I will make something out of it that I don't really like and then I keep holding it, keep holding it, keep holding it and then it's just lying. So now finally after years and years I'm gonna make something out of it. It's um, uh, cooked wool and it means that it doesn't fray. Don't know if you can see it. Uh, yeah, I think you can see it now. Like all the sides are, are the same, whether they are cut or not cut, it, it doesn't really matter because it doesn't fray. And that means that what I told you before, we don't have to uh, put things white sides together, then um, sew over it and then turn it around because uh, this doesn't fray, so you don't have to finish it like that. I put lining in because I don't like this on my skin, so uh, I don't want this just to be one um, piece. But how we're gonna sew it is, is a bit different. What you're gonna do is you're gonna put one part over the other, just with a centimeter on top of each other, and then you're gonna sew half a centimeter from the edge, and that will be your seams. So it looks very different, but it looks very nice because then you can see this is real good wool uh, that you have sewn it from, and it looks very expensive when you make a coat like this. So you're gonna cut all the pieces out of this, you're gonna put, uh, cut the facing uh, from the front as I just mentioned, you're gonna take out of this too, so the, uh, only the front with the lapels will have double uh, wool. The rest of the, of the coat I bought some lining and you can have a really cheap lining, uh, it's nice when it's very uh, silky, very um, sleek because then it uh, falls nicely over your jumper that you have underneath your coat. So make sure you have a very sleek uh, lining. Uh, this one was I think three dollars a meter or something so it's very uh, inexpensive and it's very nice to work with. Not to sew but it's very nice to wear when you put it under this, uh, this wool. So find a, a really thin sleek lining to, uh, to put under this. Uh, then we're gonna cut it out. So cut it out with one centimeter all around. Uh, when you're not sure about something, cut some more so you can cut it off. Uh, and when I've cut it out, I'll show you how we, uh, we start the sewing and where we're gonna start it. Oh, and of course, you also need some buttons. I bought four. I don't know if I will put four on, but then I have one spare. And maybe I will put uh, shoulder pads uh, in the shoulders, but I'm not sure about that. Maybe without, it's, it's even nicer. Maybe it's too 90s or 80s when you put shoulder pads in, but sometimes in coats, just a little shoulder pad looks nice. So I'll see how it, uh, how it looks when we, uh, we are doing, uh, where we are there. 